On this morning's Health Watch, a new study by Consumer Reports takes an in-depth look at the safety of the chicken that we buy in the grocery store. Consumer correspondent Susan Copen has obtained the results exclusively, and she's here to share them. Good morning, Susan. Good morning, Maggie. Consumer Reports tested whole chickens for two types of bacteria that can make you very sick. The results may surprise you. From the farm to the factory to the family table, in the U.S., chicken is one popular protein. But just how safe are those birds we're eating? According to Urvashi Rangan at Consumer Reports, not safe enough. It's a dirty industry and it needs to be cleaned up. Consumer Reports purchased 382 raw whole broiler chickens from more than 100 stores in 22 states and tested for salmonella and a dangerous bacteria called Campylobacter. In your findings, how many chickens came back with contamination? In our findings, nearly two-thirds of the chickens that we tested had either one or both pathogens. 62% of the birds had some level of Campylobacter, 14% had Salmonella, 9% had both. Only 34% of the chickens were completely clean of both pathogens. You can't see these pathogens, so you must assume that any piece of raw meat that you're handling has some level of pathogen on it. The CDC estimates salmonella and campylobacter from chicken and other foods infect 3.3 million Americans, hospitalize over 26,000, and kill more than 650 every year. I think it was the most painful thing I've ever experienced. 13-year-old Anna Pellish blames undercooked chicken tenders for her battle with salmonella. She's now a more careful eater. With meat, I always check to make sure that it's done to my liking. The National Chicken Council, which represents chicken producers in the United States, said in a statement to CBS News, like all fresh foods, raw chicken may have some microorganisms present, but these are destroyed by the heat of normal cooking. The industry does an excellent job in providing safe, wholesome food to American consumers. But Urvashi Rangan says more needs to be done before chickens ever reach the store. The government needs to take a look at what measures work, what measures don't, and need to step up the standards so that less contaminated birds are sold to consumers overall. The most recent test by the USDA showed lower numbers than the Consumer Reports test for both pathogens. Chicken processors must obey specific rules on salmonella, but no federal standards for Campylobacter currently exist. And the presence of bacteria on a chicken does not mean you will automatically get sick, Maggie. So let's talk about ways to prevent getting okay. sick. First of all, when we go to the store, what should we look for when we're shopping for chicken? So when we go shopping, buy your meat last and grab some bags from the produce department and pick up your chicken in the baggie and then put it maybe at the bottom underneath the cart when you're shopping. The that next way that the liquid doesn't spill. Doesn't spill and you don't actually have to touch anything. And All keep right. it in your baggie when, when you bring it home and put it in the fridge. Okay, the next is when you take it home and you're handling it before have, cooking it. Have a cooking board that's specifically designated for raw meat. You only use it for raw meat. And Consumer Reports says don't rinse your chicken in the kitchen sink. Most of us do. Where else would you I, rinse it? They say take a pot of water if you need to and dip the chicken. But if you're rinsing it in the sink, they say there's a chance that it can spill and actually spread the juices. All right, okay? and what about when you're cooking the chicken? So when you're cooking, make sure your chicken is cooked to at least 165 degrees and you should be fine. Use a Worth meat thermometer. While investment yes. right there. Meat thermometer and put it in the thigh of the chicken. All right, Susan All right. Copen, thank you. Great stuff as always. You can check out the entire Consumer Reports test results on our website. It's earlyshow.cbsnews.com.